William, I'm loving it. He's pissed, isn't he? He's pissed. He's pissed. <laughs> you're, just, you're absolute. You're pissed already. He's pissed as a bar. Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas, like how do I get over Mary Berry calling picky teas pathetic? Oh, I need to post about that. You did. Did I? Yes, you did. Oh, I've already okay. seen it. Don't okay. worry. And is there a wrong way to eat a pee? And what should you do? Is there a wrong way to drink pee? And oh, Jordan. Oh, sorry. It's pee with an A. Sorry. Oh, are they spelled differently? Yes, darling. I also found out today it's not terminal. It's terminal. <laughs> so what were you calling it? Terminal 5, I said. <laughs> terminal 5? Yeah, it's terminal 5, isn't it? E- yes. Terminal. So You're a very special person, aren't you? Oh, I'm an actually uh, published author. So. <laughs> I don't know how, but you are. Uh, what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not usual like any answer. Are we William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert? No, we're not, Jordan North, radio presenter and author. I'm more commander, you're more commando. That's from Harriet. Can I ask, are you wearing underwear? I am. Yes, yes. okay, fine, good. Okay. Should we pour a gin and a bonnet? Oh, yeah. We, we and I feel, what a moment, because look, Gene Divas, on the day we're recording this... It, oh, oh. Someone's got a book out. <laughs> uh, on the day we're recording this, it's the day that our book has come out. Obviously, Woo! we're doing Woo! we're doing it on this day because tomorrow one of us is unavailable uh, because they're going on holiday. Um, we didn't get a cheer from Adam then. I think we might call him Poker Face Adam. <laughs> what's, what's Adam with a little bit more enthusiasm, please? Woo! There we go. <laughs> well, can we? What's it like a, a word beginning with A for, that's like Poker Face? Um, uh, anonymous. Anonymous uh, Adam. Anonymous Adam. Well, he's That's not that anonymous with that cheer. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, it's quite a moment because when we started this podcast almost six years ago, little did we know we'd have a book. Here we are. Oh, it's, you'll make me cry. It's an evening record. I plan on getting absolutely sloshed. Yay! <laughs> no, don't ruin it. Do you like to drink with William? Because William is our mate. And when we drink with William, he dances oh. drinking at eight, seven, I can't, six, Sorry, no, I can't down a gin and a bonnet. That is an awful lot of alcohol and that would be... I did consider doing it, I would just be honest. I did. Oh, that tastes good. Go on, you've got to finish yours. I am going to. I've good. just had a sip. Well done. Oh. Also, this is reminding me, not not to continue plugging it, but I actually, for the first, I started listening to the audiobook today. Skip over your bits when you start speaking, but I was listening to my bits. And... Um, Actually, there's a very good production. So well done, Adam, and everyone involved in that. Yeah. Like, even when you hear us talk about gin and de Bonnet, there are some sound effects. Better yeah. than that, there's, but there are there are some sound effects. We talked about a, a donkey, and they've got Ben with coconuts in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Little donkey. Don't know. Um, at the time of recording, like William said, it is... Uh, it's, it's, oh, we haven't it's, toasted. I know. Who, 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 who? It, it's also, aside from the book... It's Diego's third birthday. It is, boys! Congratulations! It's not all about me today, but I just want to say it's my third birthday and I'm feeling fucking fabulous. <laughs> and I just wanted to wish you all a very um, happy publication day as well. Diego. Thanks. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Very special. I love the book. love the book. It's red. It's my colour. Um... It- it comes after, it, it, hilariously, last night I get a message from, a voice message from my uh, friend and colleague Anna saying that um, her niece had uh, was really worrying that Diego had died because she hadn't actually seen anything about oh. Diego on social media. I'm here, babes. I'm here. But it turns out it's because producer Ben hasn't been given the password to Diego's Instagram account. Oh, oh he's lost oh. the password. Can you not do account recovery? Oh, he's tried. It's so hard. It's so hard. Uh, anyway, Diego alive and well at time of recording. Yes. Fingers crossed he makes it to the time this is released. Like I was saying, it's an evening record. I've just come off air. I've come straight here because we wanted to uh, reflect the day at the time mm. of recording. It's Thursday, the day the books come out. And yeah, wow. It's been a day. It's been a day. I it popped has... into Waterstones Piccadilly this morning, walked around trying to find the book, couldn't find it, had a little bit of a panic. So I went over to the till and went, Am I? Um, can you? Would you have a book that has come out today? Would it be in store already? I was in there one minute past nine when I opened, <laughs> and she went, uh, "Yeah, what's the book?" And I went, uh, "It's called Help." I sexted my boss, and she sort of looked at me puzzledly, and she went, 
aren't you one of the authors? And I went, yes, this, this is an ego trip. <laughs> I said, I'm coming in here to see my own book, which I know fully well what it looks like in the wild. Uh, anyway, it was on a table. I went over. I signed a few copies. Did you? And then we stuck little stickers on it as well. Oh, say so signed copy. Yes, yeah, so hello to Bella at Waterstone. Well, you should have only put half a stick. Well, this is what I said. I said, does it matter if, if, you know, only one of us signs? And she said, well, it depends on which one of you is signing. Um, and apparently when I do it, it's absolutely fine. Why, why would it not be if I wasn't? Because you don't have very many followers, so it's better to... You're such a yeah. William actually said, whilst we, we're going to no. talk about the book tour. Can I say... Book of the book event. Can I say, everyone, I'm going to say this now. I'm very lucky to have my, my followers, my disciples, but it counts for nothing in real life. It is so much more important that you have personality, you are generous, you are loyal, you are a decent human being. Whether you have one follower or 1.6 million followers means absolutely nothing. Amen so do that. not get fixated wow. on it. That's so true. And that is great words from a man with 1.6 million followers. Yes. Thank you. It's it, but, and I will say this. Yes. You, it, and you genuinely deserve this. It's, it's, wow. I'm so proud of you. That's very kind. I am genuinely. This is it's fantastic. No, mate, honestly, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> you've got more. You've got more followers on your yes. Instagram than the Radio One account. Mm. That's it's amazing. You are. Yeah, I'm really well, proud that's of you. Well, and full credit to Freddie as well. So and, and it's, it's so right. sort of a, a whole team of people. But William did say this week. I went, oh, let's get a selfie, a picture of the book, whilst we were doing some promo, and he went. And you said you were going to put it on your Instagram. Yeah, I put it. I said I'm going to put it on my Instagram, and he went, "Will anybody see it?" <laughs> <laughs> As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com, or you can tweet us. You know, I should do more. We should record more after the show because I feel know. warmed up. I, mean, well, I can't help having it anyway. Well, or, well. What are you trying to say? I'm <laughs> shit usually. Or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexandmyboss. You can wait. To, you can wait to William. <laughs> All right, all right. You can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a hand little reply on one of his own luxury greeting cards with executive self seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sextonmoreboss.com. Stick a pony in the pocket. Well, that was a tour of the UK via Jordan's voice. Press a suitcase round the back. What's round the back? Because if you want the... I don't know. Questions, but you don't ask questions, and brother, I'm, I'm all right. Man. Yeah, I have finished my first Thank gin and a bonnet. Um, oh. The book is out. Yes, let's let's not go on too much. No, right let's not. Oh, God. Tight. Cheat. <laughs> Did you hear what you just said? What, the, the, the stopper um, and the lid? Um, I know we keep... Just please humour us for now. I know we've been harping on about this book for the past, like, while now, but... It's a big day for us that, that it's out. And uh, and very soon we'll have other stuff to talk about. Will we? Yep. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Um, but uh, let's just start by saying this. The book's out. Thank you to everyone who has bought it. Only I could book a pissing holiday. The, literally the day after my book's out, I'm on holiday. The dates have clashed. Oh. I'm so sorry. That's because I drank the gym. It's the, the D's got... It's come back in my mouth. Is it? Yeah. Not the first time. I'll swallow. Um, we can carry on. But I've got to tell you, we was in this meeting with Penguin Random House months and months ago at the start of the year. <laughs> and when they said, when they said the release date of the book, mm. the colour just drained from my face. We was in a, a big board. We was in a big boardroom at, at like this <laughs> London skyline. Very important meeting with all the top people at Penguin Random House. Thank mm. you again, who uh, have published the book. And I was like, I'm sure I'm on holiday that day. And I said to him, oh, it's right. We'll just push it back a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't do that in publishing. <laughs> no. Like, like that's a, oh, you, it's, is when it is. But yeah. to be fair, in my defense, the holiday was booked before. Right, yeah. You don't believe me, do you? No, no, I do, no, I do believe you. No, no I do. I it genuinely. was genuinely. We, I'm not sure they did, but no, I believe you. I booked and I just, uh, yeah, but I didn't. It was like looking at across the table at like four cats' bottoms sitting there, sort of with pursed lips, sort of very unimpressed. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of which, Penguin Random House have sent us a lovely cake here. Yes, it's a cake with our book cover on it, you and me, and saying happy publication. Should we have some cake? Yes. Now, let's, could you, um, let's get rid of the ribbon. Does on, the ribbon. On the blue roll. On the, yes, we've got, got luxury. Have we got linen? Have we got damask? No, we've got blue rib- roll. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm cutting into it there. Just keep the ribbon on. Well, it's hard to. cut it off. Is that a... 
You, there should be there's a join. Somewhere. I'm going on holiday. Oh, on. there's a join. There's the join. At the yeah. back. Yeah. Not mentioned. Mm. Do you think it'll affect it when you're going on holiday? Oh, for God's sake, shut up. Um, oh. Right. I'm going to enjoy placing this knife. <laughs> Cut some for Adam and Ben. I just want a sliver. I don't know what type of cake it is until we take it out. Oh, it looks like... Moist. <laughs> is that a technical term? It's sort of vanilla with a cream and a raspberry. Jordan would know. Yes, Jordan would know now he's a Mary Berry aficionado. Oh. Mm. Oh, I'm going to enjoy putting my face in your cake. Oh, that's good. Oh, sorry, Adam and Ben, would you like to say? No, I, I, you did say that you finished. Oh, hang on, there's a, there's a water spillage. Hold on, I've just knocked the water, the ice. Mm. William, oh, oh, he's pissed, isn't he? He's already pissed. He's pissed. <laughs> you're, just, you're absolute, you're pissed already. He's pissed as a bar. How many have you had before? No, no. Honestly. <laughs> I did have one before you arrived. Hello! Oh no, it's the voice thing. It's the voice you? thing. It's he goes, voice. this is what he does. He goes, I did, uh, I did have uh, uh, one before you arrived. <laughs> right, Ian, just give no. that to them. This is a disaster. No, well, sorry. I've I'm already so... stuck my fingers in that, so they don't want that. I'm so. Let, I'm, I'm just so getting sorry, some more blue roll for them. Let me cut a piece. Adam, are you going to have some? Oh, that's right. that's Beautifully you. served. <laughs> Can you give the? Can, who can we give this to? Because I hate, well, I hate food going to waste. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's his my bit. Oh, is this your bit? All right. So yeah, everyone enjoy the cake. And here we are. It's been quite the week, hasn't it? It's been quite the week. Um, can I? Can I just say something? Oh, <clears> hello. <throat> Who's put a mic on him? Um, I f well, first thing I wanted to just say, I feel like. To, I, for me, anyway, today, on Instagram, on social media, seeing, like, the sheer number of people just sharing them with a picture yeah. of the book. Like, we're used to, like, doing the podcast, but we never really have that opportunity to see people with the podcast. Like, yeah. we, we obviously do our live shows, and like, that's amazing to see so many people come and support us, but <coughs> this is, like, an actual visual thing. It's an actual thing. Mm. We've never had that before. We've no. had a podcast, but we've never had a thing. Yeah. So just seeing that, I think, has been quite phenomenal today. It has been phenomenal. It's um, been great. To see all those people with our thing in their hands. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant. Yes. Um, but also, and then I, I, was, I was sort of blown away this morning. I was dancing around my flat, so excited. And then I thought to myself that we've done this podcast for five years now. And obviously you guys, you do thank the G&D was quite a lot. But they've never had a chance to thank you in person. Oh, stop. So I feel like I should have said this probably ages ago, but what an amazing five years. Oh. Thank you to both of you for bringing this into everyone's lives. It's been amazing. And, and today it felt like we'd sort of, we got to a moment. And thank you, Ben. No, no, that, this is for you guys. Th well, thank you, guys. thank you. And also to Stuart as well and to everyone else that's involved. But we will, we will take your congratulate. That's that's really sweet, mate. You're gonna make me cry. Bless you. Thank you. Oh, I love him really. Yeah, we do love him. And and we we I did say this before the record. We wouldn't be here without you, Ben. We wouldn't. This is you and Stuart and everyone at Audio always. Well, I'll I'll, I'll never be too far away from the podcast. So good. who said that? <laughs> I feel we're getting a bit self-indulgent now. We are, but, but yes. Genuinely, if you've bought the book and everyone that's been posting on Twitter and Instagram, it means so much to us. So thank you. I'm going to cry. Oh, bless. I'm fine. Um, we were in Heat magazine to promote the book, and I told I told my mother this. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> what? what? Poor is I'm moving out. on. Okay. All right. We're not Spanish. We don't need to do emotion too much. All right. Anyway, I told my mother. I went. We're in Heat magazine, and she went. Oh. I said, well, I'm only telling you if you want to go and get a coffee. And she went, that's one for the coffee table, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, and talking of Heat Magazine. I'm going to London <laughs> to buy a Heat Magazine. I'm What's going that? to London to buy a Heat Magazine. Uh, you want me to buy... Oh, she was a bit German then. <laughs> Thank God. You want me to buy the Heat... <clears throat> oh, God, wait. This is what happens. I've, been, I've done a voiceover this morning. Oh. Eight o'clock. I've done the radio and now I'm just, I'm shutting down. Oh, it's hard, I know. Um, 
I've, I can't do your mum's impression. What's happened? Well, never mind. Well, let me. Darling, let me... I will not be buying the Heat magazine on my coffee table. It will not go with um, Vogue and. I've completely lost it. That is not your mum. No. <laughs> what is going on? You need a holiday. Oh. Well, let me read you the opening paragraph of Heat Magazine. Champagne, champagne all around. What do you do if you get a what do you do if you cross a working class lad from Burnley who likes Guinness and picky teas and a posh bloke from Bath? <gasps> from Bath? Have they said you're from Bath? From Bath? Well so Bath ba- Bath's a bit more upmarket than Bristol though, isn't mm-hmm. it? Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Also, discuss. And I quote, my mum doesn't like it when they call me working class. Because she said to me once, technically, with your dad's wage, we're uh, lower middle. (laughs) 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 Make her work convention secretary. (laughs) That's what she said. I went, we're pretty working class. You can't. can't Oh, look, I've got your head. Look at the piece of cake that's left. What? I've got Jordan's head, just coincidentally. Right, I feel like we're going off track now, so come on. I'm going to pop your head in my mouth. Oh. Hmm. Is that a good head? (laughs) Surprisingly, you give you give good head. (laughs) Who'd have thought? Um. Hey. (laughs) Come on. Best of order. Settle down. Settle, settle, settle. Settle, settle. Settle, settle. settle, I shall be, I shall be insisting that Heat Magazine print a correction next week. This is, this has been a disaster of an episode so far. Settle, settle. Settle, settle. Uh, Before we move on, we've just got to say that this week we've been doing uh, a lot of interviews and press for the book tour. Mm. A couple of things I've noticed about William. (laughs) His broadcast etiquette is the worst. Right. It's, if you ever are, are lucky enough to work in broadcasting, TV or radio or whatever, when you're outside the studio, it's well known that you be quiet. And a lot of people don't talk in whispers, but like the floor manager could say, guys, you're on in, uh, you're on in five minutes. Because obviously over the fake wall, not an actual wall, it's a studio fake wall. It's a, it's a prop, is the actual live broadcast. William, it was the same at Five Live. It was the same on BBC <laughs> Breakfast. Where would you want one, darling? <laughs> Do I look okay over here? <laughs> oh, I forgot my poppy. <laughs> Let me get my poppy. It's like, oi, gobshite. They're run over there. The I, same I have a voice live. that carries. Five Live is going, I will have a Barocca. <laughs> I will have a Barocca. Actually, pull the ripcord. <laughs> I will have a bro- I'm like, I did not there. say pull the ripcord. I'm cord. like, Martin Lewis is on there. <laughs> By the way, who could have been a disaster. Mm. You know, um, I picked up Louis Theroux's um, glasses yeah. at the NTAs. Went into the um, Five Live studio after Martin Lewis. Mm. He'd left his Invisalign. Yes. Oh, I picked no. it up to take it, thinking it was mine. I was about to put I was like, that's not my Invisalign. Ooh. I nearly, I, I assume it was Martin Lewis's. It might not be. Could have been Naggers. It could have been anybody. He was mm. in before, so it could have been anybody's. And he might not be openly out that he's got a... Invisalign. Invisalign. You don't want to put anything of Martin Lewis's in your mouth that you don't want. Well, anyway, so uh, wow. there was that. And when I, I've i been on the other side of the coin, like I always say when, when we do interviews, you've, you've got to be on it. Right? So we've done a lot of radio and a lot of I press. I was on it, wasn't we I? Were, we were. Yeah. I thought, thought we were. And we actually, we don't mind doing it. But I've been on the other side where I've been interviewing people and they've literally been rolled into the studio. You've had to go and do what they call a junket in a hotel and they just give you nothing and they're knackered and they're being asked the same questions. So I, I thought we could give it. And just to boost morale on, was it yesterday? Yeah, Wednesday. Oh God, this week's dragged. On Wednesday, <laughs> we did like our 80th radio interview and um, in radio to do a mic check, <laughs> they don't ask you to say one, two or count to 10. They ask you, I don't know why it is, they call headphones cans, but also in radio, and I do it when I've got people on the phone and stuff or guessing. I do, oh, we all say the same question, which mm. is? Top or bottom? <laughs> <laughs> what you having, what you, can you, they all say, can you just tell us what you've had for your breakfast, please? Yeah. Because you talk normally and you go, oh, um, what do they have? Uh, and they speak normally and they're thinking. So that's why you do it. So we got asked that about the fourth time this week. And um, when we was being interviewed on one radio station, William got asked what he was for breakfast, and I quickly scribbled the words. <laughs> it was a three-letter word, beginning with C. I put cum <laughs> on a piece of paper. So if you listen to this interview, I don't know if he's gone out, I held it up to William, and we're literally trying our best not to laugh, and just going, uh, and William, what did for your breakfast? And I'm going... <laughs> 
The travel is. He went, I had berries. And I went, I'm, I'm so sorry. Well, you've got a bit on your chin there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, you had to be there, but you've just got to keep yourself entertained. You have got to keep yourself keep entertained. Up. Yeah. Well, on a related note, mm -hmm. can I move on? Yeah, okay. Well, on a related note, a uh, few of us went out for a lovely dinner uh, a few weeks ago. It was our friends Joe, Luke, Will and Freddie, Mikey and me. And um, we came out of the uh, restaurant. We're mm. walking to our respective tubes, but sort of all together. Guy standing on a street corner, he goes, all right, lads, uh, want to go to a titty bar? <laughs> well, we were all delighted. We passed <laughs> straight. <laughs> Read the room. Who were you with? Uh, Will, Freddie, Joe and Luke. Wow. Yeah. We were all we all minced along going, oh, pass the straight, it's lovely. <laughs> Put it this way, them lot together and met the YMCA <laughs> music video. Look like Millwall fans. <laughs> we would. And they won't mind me saying that. Uh, well, I hope not. We'll find out. No. Yes. So, yeah. Fair yeah. play. Anyways, that Does that make your week, that? I, it did make... I mean, it's ridiculous that, you know, it didn't really make our week because I don't care whether I passed for straight or whatever, but um, it's odd, you know, literally, okay. like, please, come on. Also, a titty bar. Yes. <laughs> I, still I was wearing a Diamante poppy brooch, for God's sake. <laughs> I mean... A titty... Did he still say Yeah, they called it a titty bar. I mean, I would not bar. call it a titty bar. A titty bar. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Mm. Anyway. I have been in... What one was it? I probably didn't. Where enough. was it? What, what was it? We were in Mayfair. Mayfair. What, mm. what street were you coming out? Uh, Queen, ironically, Queen Street. Oh, that'd have been Mick. <laughs> yeah, I know Mick. Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> Shut up. I'm joking. Oh, okay. Anyway, well, look, here we go. Is um, it? And at time of recording, producer Ben and I are preparing. You are heading off to Skegness. Uh, whereas uh, producer Ben and I are going to Sheffield, um, so who's got the better who's got the better deal there? Mm. But are you we'll... going to Sheffield tomorrow? Yes, and Wakefield, and what? And Bristol and Cardiff. We will have been to as well by the time this goes out. Are you annoyed? I'm no, we're so not annoyed. Sorry. Stop it! Don't. We're gonna have you're... more fun. Yeah. Oh, cheers. You're gonna make me feel guilty. Producer Ben is staying with Brian and Sarah. Oh, are well, you? Yeah. In the big bedroom again? Oh, no, they've been. Uh, the no, they've moved. Oh, it's it's still a sizable bedroom, They're but it's not the big bungalow. bedroom. Hmm? It better be. Oh, oh. Who's the madam? Excuse me, darling. Oh, she's, she's back. back. <laughs> <laughs> you will stay where I will tell you to stay. Oh. But obviously Jordan is my favourite. I bought his friend in the castle. But not as much as my James. <laughs> I love my James. Whoopsie woo! Congratulations on the book, bro. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on, let's do them all. Give me another. Oh! What's what's Mikey had to say about the book? Oh, oh I'm dead chuffed, George. <laughs> I am. Oh, it's, it's my little author, my little flower pot author. He is. Hi. That's your third clause. Jesus. Uh, fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Come on, get it down, you. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Come on, if, if Mike, you have got to finish yours. Um, uh, I've not even packed yet. Well, right. Whatever. Cue the jingle, we'll go to Jordan's Jolly... Oh, look, what's just popped up of us in France as well? Oh. That's a great photo of that us. That is a great photo. Oh, God, that's me getting out of the pool. Oh, my God. With Mikey. Look like I've just been dug up. Uh, cue the jingle, we'll go to Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. Cha-cha-cha. Okay. Thanks to so many G and Divas that have been sending me so many great jokes on um, Instagram and Twitter. I've got enough to keep us going now for another five series. That's a shame. So the first one is from Cat, <laughs> and she says, "That cat? No, it's a different cat." Oh, what? well, oh yeah, do the do the feed. Okay. Sorry. What does a deaf gynecologist do? Do you want to try that again with with the <laughs> syllables in the right okay. place? What does a deaf gynecologist? <laughs> I can't, I can't read this, it's so funny. What does a deaf... <laughs> Would you like me to do it? No, I'll do it. Thanks for this cat. I've got so many, literally. I've okay, got... well, let's have one of them. <laughs> what does a... <laughs> what does a deaf gynecologist do? And I'll tell you the punchline after the break. All right, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us. It's time for Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. Before we go on to your problems and dilemmas and questions on etiquette and all other things, what does a deaf gynecologist do? 
I don't know, Jordan. Tell me, what does a deaf gynaecologist do? He reads lips. Oh. Right, that wasn't actually that. I thought you'd find that funny. <laughs> Kevin sent us this one for Halloween last week. Uh, today, I went to buy a Dracula costume for Halloween. The shop assistant brought out a Blackburn Rovers shirt. I said, you must misheard me. I said I wanted to look like a count. <laughs> I mean, that's funny if you are a Blackburn Rovers Burnley, you know, if you it's get like that. A Blackburn Rovers fan, well, it's it? no, it's not. It's actually deeply offensive. But <laughs> you know, um, you got that, isn't it? Yeah, you like oh, that one. So I wanted to look like a count. I mean, you can do that joke, you know. Oh, I went in. I wanted to look like an Everton yeah. supporter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah all right, all right. Situation. Okay. Um, before we go on to the listeners' problems, I'd like to tell you about a podcast I've been getting into. Oh, because okay. you know me. I don't normally listen to podcasts, no. but I'm listening. I'm trying to expand my range. Mm-hmm. And it, normally it would just be this one and Keep Up Appearances, the luxury podcast, number one in TV and film, by the way. <laughs> um, you know me, I don't like to mention it, but Jesus. number one. Um, <laughs> I'm going to end up making the tea when I get back. That'll be my job. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is a, a new one. Uh, it's a true crime. And lots of people say to start with, you know, crime. Because, you know, remember Serial back in the day? That's sort of what helped yeah. podcasts come back. So it's true crime. Sue Perkins presents it. And it's all about uh, this woman that was called Carrie Jade. And she has multiple different identities, basically. And she conned lots of people, did all sorts of awful crimes. Uh, Some people knew her as Claudia. Not that one. Some people knew her as Stephanie and all these other names. Uh, But actually, she did. Did she exist? Did she not? Anyway, it's very good. And also, full credit, because producer Ben has worked on it, potentially while I'm listening. Uh, But it it, it is very good. Have I summarised it well, Ben? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you've done this that. This is your opportunity okay. to talk about yeah. it. That does actually sound really good. It is. It is good. Oh. It's, it's done very nicely. Does that summar- Have I summarised it well enough, Ben? Yeah, I think so. It, it's 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 a big deal for it's a big deal for me. It feels like it's, it, I'm I I think it's very interesting. Yeah, and I it's nice for you to work on a quality podcast. Well, exactly, and I I, I I obviously love listening to this podcast. I work on it, but the podcasts that I listen to are actually more of those like story based. Pods, so those ones that go. Oh, right. They twist and they turn. I'm sorry, but am I the only one here that isn't promoting? You know, I do have another podcast on BBC Sounds. <laughs> well, talk about it's it. It's called At Home with Vic and Jordan. It's very funny. It's a debrief of the week. Nice. Right. There we go. Well, yeah. well you, can, you can talk about it. I've never I, said I, no. Do you know the best podcast? What? Um, politics. It's, the rest is politics. Oh, that doesn't need any promotion. It's absolutely brilliant. And I listen to the news agents every night on my way home. Do you? Do you remember how much I fangirled them at the podcast? Awards? I know. I can't believe they were there. The news agents. The actual news agents. You walked up to them and went, hello, it's Jordan. Did I? I went, hello, it's William. Did you actually? Is that there because they say? Yes. That's how they start it. But that's my favourite podcast. Right, can we go to the listeners' questions? And put... Carrie J does not exist. Search for that one. Ignore Jordan's recommendations. <laughs> Oh, that's the name of the podcast, Carrie Jane yes. Does Not Exist. You should, you should listen to it on your flight. Is that why you're starting to look and dress a bit like Sue Perkins at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> the cardigan and the glasses. I can't respond to that. You do look a bit like Sue Perkins. I'll take it. She's lovely. She is, and she's a very, very great broadcaster. Anyway. anyway. Marvellous. Right, let's go on to the listeners' problems. This Jesus. is from Ellie. Dearest William Jordan and E.P. Ben, my part. Take your time. <laughs> I know you've had a drink. Just take your time. I will pick up and produce the rest of this episode. Oh! Carry on. Dearest William Jordan and E.P. Ben. Into the mic. Thank you. <laughs> my partner and I went to Gran Canaria for a nice swinging less, holiday. Less breathy. Oh my God, what? Carry on. <laughs> I'll shut up. Seriously, go on. We thought an Airbnb would be a bit more private than a hotel, so that's what we went for. We were told that someone would come to clean our room during our stay. One day we left early for a boat tour, but had to come back because my partner forgot his swimming gear. One of the owners of the apartment was... Swimming or swinging? Swimming. (laughs) Right, Okay. One of the owners of the apartment was changing our bedsheets and told us he moved some stuff so he could clean a bit more easily. My partner and I are pretty messy people, so we didn't mind. When we came back after the boat tour, though, all our stuff was misplaced. We had to search to find suitcases, my medication, clothes, phone chargers. We felt a bit violated, to be honest. 
The owner touched a lot of our stuff and the fact that I really had to search for my medication and some toiletries made me feel uncomfortable. Now, this Airbnb host is a five-star review hunter, so they keep asking me for a five-star review. I'm not sure if we should write a review at all. Even though the apartment was great and they gave us a lot of good advice for things to do, but the fact that the owner went through our stuff bothers me a lot. Should we write a review and be honest about how we didn't like that, or am I being petty and just leave it be? Kind regards, Ellie. Can I just say the swinging holiday? Why was that relevant? <laughs> Ellie, we need to know more. I was expecting an entire bloody hell. Adam's got a semi on here, Ellie. Come on, <laughs> come on, Ellie. Bloody hell! Why did you have to? Right. No, I mean, you could have just said my partner and I were on holiday, and, and the <laughs> yes. entire letter would have worked. I thought you were going to be telling us about what's the etiquette of wiping down the harness or you know what's the etiquette of, <laughs> I don't think all swingers are into harnesses what's the etiquette of watching your wife getting shagged by someone else like how do you what's the small talk I don't know each, each their own you seem to know a lot I've seen channel 4 documentaries <laughs> that's why <laughs> gob <laughs> um, but no I think you're right there you, you should message him saying yeah. please stop asking me to leave a five star review we we've out of decency we've decided not to yeah, because we you went through our stuff. However, if you would like me to leave a review, I would probably mention that you went through our stuff, or just leave a review and say. I, was, was, I think do the latter. I, if he's constantly pestering you, just, you can ask once. I think mm. you know, I'm a business owner as, for the English man, and we ask people to review. We don't constantly then remind them. Mm. Just do it once, and if they don't, no problem. If they do, fantastic. Mm. We're not constantly doing it. Yeah, and and obviously we should also say it's really bad of the owner to do that. Do you think to, to search through the stuff? Mm. Did someone left the Hoover on. <laughs> <laughs> no, someone's producer Ben's mic on. Uh, I'm joking. Should, should should she leave the review though and be that honest? What's the etiquette? I about? would. Would you? If she's constantly, if you know, then it'd be hoisted by his own petard. But what if he hadn't asked for review? Should you do that anyway and say I think they went through our stuff? We can't prove it, can you? No, and I guess you have to be. I mean, the the, the legal, my untrained legal brain is now saying you potentially shouldn't write he did that when you don't have any hard evidence. I could imagine you being a barrister. Thank you. I could, in another life. Yeah. Sorry, barista. Not barista. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you need a holiday. Um, this is from Alice. I do after that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Dear William and Jordan, the other week when the Rugby World Cup was on, loved it, uh, I went to the pub early to secure a table for me and five other friends. I had to keep telling people that all the seats around me were taken and I started feeling anxious as mm. I was not sure how long I could hold seats at a table before having to start letting people sit there. I was texting my friends frantically to get their ASAP. My question to you both is, is it okay to save seats for friends coming and if so, how many is too many and how long is too long? Thanks and love the show, Alice. Alice, it's one of those where you go into a pub and all the seats reserved and you're fuming. But then when you actually reserve a table and a seat yourself, you're like, I'm so glad we did this. So I would say that... Um, 10 minutes. I, I was about to say 15, maybe 30. 30 minutes? If one person is there, but longer than 30, you're going to have to give him up, I think. If, she, if she's there to hold the table, mm. but your friends need to be there within the first 15, anything later than 30 minutes, you just have to say, tough shit, we give away your... Mm. Well, you can tell I've had a drink, I'm effing and jeffing like a trooper. You need um, to drink more. No, just, I'm just... Don't, William... Just let me know. When this podcast started, you were encouraging me to absolutely down yes, it. Yes, I know, but I'm going, I'm, I'm one of my first drink on the plane tomorrow. Oh, heavens, I'll shush. Proper one. It's, um, it's much better in Farringdon than it is in 36,000 feet. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go on to the next one. Oh. Don't pick the cake. What? Sorry. That's bad etiquette. Have the, oh, shit. Oh. This is from Isla. Hi, William Jordan and EPB. I'm a newish listener of the podcast, and I never thought I'd have a question to ask until now. I spent Sunday evening casually swiping on Bumble, and suddenly I saw a friend's boyfriend gasp. Again, we've had this before, haven't we? Just to clarify, I would never swipe yes on her boyfriend, girl code and all that. I pondered this situation for a few minutes. Surely she has a right to know. However, whilst looking at his account, I see his bio says E-N-M. What's that mean? M&M. E-N-M, which after a Google, I find, found, which, uh, reset, which after a Google, I found out means ethical non-monogamy. So now I start thinking it could be a consensual thing oh. and she must know about it. But my question is, do I approach her to let her know just in case he's lying? Obviously, if it's all above board and she's aware, then I'm happy. But is it weird to just check in on it? 
Please dispense some of your fountain of knowledge upon me. Isla. Isla. It wasn't. We've not had this before. No. Um, it was on Dolly Parton. Not you Dolly mean Parton. Dolly Alderson? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Dolly Alderton. I was li- I'm listening to her audio book. She's okay. great. She's a proper agony. I've talked about it before. Yes, She's we have. fantastic. I love her. First all right. Thing. Yes, all right. Um, but I will take her advice here, and I think it was something along the lines of, no, just don't get involved. Even if, in, if, if it is non-mahogany. <laughs> <laughs> what? I think it's non-mahogany! Oh, <laughs> I did What? What is this? What is it? Mahogany is a type of wood. Oh, for f- oh, sh- oh don't. Monogamy. No, what did I say? Mahogany. Mahogany. <laughs> I need more cake. <laughs> Even if it is non-monogamous, what is it? Monogamous. Like, monog- if it, 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 even if they're in an open relationship, right? Yeah, just I'd, I'd stay well clear and pretend you've not seen it. Yep. If it's, it's such a tricky one, this. It is. I think it's your best not saying anything. If well, your friend, however, you're out for coffee, you're out for lunch, cocktails, whatever, and they say, oh, I have a feeling Bob is, you know... I, I don't know, we're, we're disconnected, he's, he's cheating. If there's any any sort of glimmer of she is uncomfortable and unsatisfied and there's a problem, you could perhaps bring up, oh, well, the other day, and I wouldn't say months ago, I would say the other day, mm. I did see him on Bumble, or oh, potentially that is a, a segue into a more honest conversation. But if it's like your best best friend and you know they're in a nun, you probably would know. I'm just saying, and you know they're not in a non-serious relationship, then it's probably is best to tell them. Mm. It's, it's well, such I don't a know. tough I disagree. one. Do you not? I think just keep your nose just out. keep out, do you? It's such a... T- it's L- such in this instant, in this instance, yeah. because there is a bit of evidence on... Yeah, also, like, come on, if he's put his face profile on, on a dating app, statistically, someone is going to see him that knows him. Yeah. So yeah. I, if it was a... Headless photograph, perhaps, and then you obviously then got an actual photograph. You could perhaps think, okay, maybe something's a bit fishy here, mm-hmm. as it were. Um, but I would, I'd probably not say anything. Okay. This is a long one, so buckle up. This is from Robert. Dear William Jordan and EPB, I was on holiday on the Greek coast recently when an incident occurred that has since left me wondering what the best response would have been. We were enjoying a nice day at the beach, building sandcastles and paddling in the water. It was in 1951, when a group of English tourists arrived and set up a few metres away. They seemed nice enough, reminding their children to say please and thank you, chatting about the rugby and the weather, that sort of thing. Then they went into the water with some little nets and toys. It was 1951. A few minutes later, the dad and the children emerged, triumphantly proclaiming that they had caught a massive fish. When they held it up, I could see it was between 20 and 30 centimetres long and flopping about helplessly. Oh, I love that on his Tinder profile. He's held it up. That kid. In the ensuing half an hour, they dug a little hole in the sand, filled it with water and repeatedly put the fish in, took it out again with their hands and poked it with a stick. The fish was moving this whole time, so it must have been like the equivalent of waterboarding for a fish. Oh, that is cruel. Airboarding, they put in brackets. As their children lost interest, their father was heard saying, does anyone want any more one-on-one time with the fish? And the mother said, don't you want to play with it a bit more before it dies? Oh, thanks, Robert. I found this quite cruel, and the scene upset the children in our group. I was the only English adult in our party, so I felt responsible and that those other people were letting the side down a bit. I didn't say anything at the time because all of the possibilities sounded very self-righteous in my head. Catching a fish for food or just putting it back in the water is acceptable in my book. But torturing it to death is not. What should I have done? What is the etiquette for holiday situations in which other tourists behave inappropriately? Best regards, Robert. Robert? They sound like absolute psychopaths. Yes. Right, that is cruel. That is cruel. That's a tough one. Hmm. Poor fish. Did the fish die in the end? Well, we don't know. Robert, get in touch. I mean, what happened? I, I'm not going to sit here and, like... Because that's cruel. I, I love fish fingers as much as next man. <laughs> what? I'm trying to be serious here. Sorry. I'm not like a vegetarian or anything. What? I tell you, I had fish finger wrap last Saturday. It was beautiful. What? 
But I'm not trying, trying to get. I'm not trying to sound like a, you know. Can you say tree hugger? <laughs> <laughs> what have trees got to do with it? But I'm, I'm just saying that, like that's really cruel and out of order, and that must have been difficult to see. And mm. it, uh, I, I'm, I don't know what I would have been. Should should he have said something? I would have maybe gone on and just said that's very cruel. Put it back in the river, yeah, it might or the been. ocean, or the sea, whatever it was. What's the actual question? It's well, what is the etiquette for holiday situation for it, in which other tourists behave inappropriately? It's tough because tourists, like some Brits abroad, are just shameless, aren't they? Yes, and but, other nations as well. Yeah, to be fair. yeah, but, but so how if they are representing you? Maybe it is just. I don't, I don't actually think their nationality has got anything to do with this in this instance. I would just, or your nationality, Robert, I think I'd just go over to them and go, stop doing that, put it back in the, put it back in the sea. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think you actually need to, need to think of, you don't need to be polite, um, you just need to be direct, Yeah. is what I'd suggest. Okay. And that was cool, that's awful, that poor fish. This last one is from Steph. Dear William Jordan, producer Ben. One lonely e- winter evening, I was at home waiting for my friend to join me for dinner and some of our usual... Immature sinanshin. Right. I'm all up for a drink. <laughs> Everyone likes a drink. No one likes a drunk. But this is why we started recording in the mornings now. And I want to go back to Friday afternoon recordings where we have a drink. But this is... And some immature shenanigans. We often greet each other with a... What? We often greet each other with a bare <laughs> ass at the door. <laughs> People are weird. So when I saw lights go... <laughs> I can see where this is going. So when I saw lights coming onto my driveway, I quickly... (laughs) (laughs) It's not real. I quickly pulled my trousers down and pressed my pert thonged (laughs) bottom against the window next to the front door and wiggled it against the glass for a minute. (laughs) People are weird. I pulled up my trousers and opened the door to let her in. My heart sank as I suddenly realised it was not my friend, but a man with a takeaway delivery for next door. <laughs> I Pull that in book two. That's great. That's going in book two. If we, oh, get, if we get book two. I apologised profusely and assured him that I thought he was my friend and that I don't usually behave like this. He wasn't amused in the slightest. I directed him to the correct house <laughs> and then fell about laughing. What would be the correct etiquette if I were to find myself in this situation again? Keep up the good work and kindest regards from... Steph. Steph. That is a hilarious story. I, I don't think that will happen again. It's very rare. <laughs> Bloody hope not. But next time you and your mum... You and your mum. <laughs> your mum. You and your mate are doing a beat... A bum, Bear ass. A I, bum greet. Steph, I don't know how old you are, but I'm going to I'm going to just assume you're over the age of 21. Can I suggest you stop doing that? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably time to stop. People, wait, did you ever used to play bare ass as a kid? Not as a kid. <laughs> The footy game. Did you play it? Did you play it, Adam? Bear ass. How did bear ass work in your world? It was something to do with heads and no, it wasn't heads and volleys. Heads and volleys, and then if you heads lost, and what? If you lost, you had to whip your kegs down. Volleys. Volleys. Oh, volleys. Get your ass out, and then all your mates would kick the ball against your ass. You cut red ass. It was red ass. It weren't bear ass. It was red ass. You're right. Anyway. Those are the days. Oh, bloody hell. Do you play no. World Cup Willie as an adult now? No. As an adult? Mm. How does that work? Well, it's called World Cup Willie or Cuppies. Or some people call it Wembley. All against all. Anyway. That was, uh, that was a fun episode. an insight ep- into the comprehensive system. That was a fun episode. You well, are pissed. Do you want to finish my drink as well? Yeah, all right. Go on. Thank you. Um, what's coming up on the weekend release, Jordan? We're going to be covering Peas on the Pod. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know what? He's getting. Come, on, come here, come here. He's getting a handshake for that. Well done. That's one of your best ones. Look at his face. I know he's so just happy. Give producer Ben a handshake. Ben, we've talked about this, and we never put an, a picture up on our Instagram. Come and just show the cameras your um your school carpet cardigan. Isn't this the sort of material they used to do school carpets from? Don't you think? Du- durable. Oh. Would, nice. would work with high... Tra- no, it is lovely. It looks beautiful on you. But- Check, what's it saying? Label at the back. Rock, <laughs> Let me... Come here. What brand... What's, no, keep it on. Let me check the label at the back. What brand is it? 
That says this belongs to Sue Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> Always remember. Was coming. Always remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesdays and Fridays. And you can share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexwithmyboss.com. Or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexmyboss. Also, you can write to this man here, William Hanson, who, in the fullness of time, promises a handwritten reply and one of our luxury greeting cards of executive self seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sexofmyboss.com. And just one final time, thank you to everyone that's bought the book. Thank you to everybody that's helped us write the book. And it is available now in all good bookshops and all... Sainsbury's and Asda. And Sainsbury's and Asda's. And W.H. Smith. And W.H. Smith. I said all good bookshops. Oh, yeah, true, yeah. true. Waterstones yeah. as well. Yep. Foils? I haven't been into foils. Potentially. 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 We'll see you on Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye.